If you keep waking up tired in the morning, whether that's because you struggle to get to sleep at night or whether you just have a poor quality night's sleep, then here are my eight tips that I believe if you follow will allow you to become the kind of person that can spring out of bed in the morning with energy as opposed to feeling tired and groggy. And who knows, you may even be able to call yourself a morning person. But if that hasn't grabbed you, then hopefully this will because sleep has also been associated with a significant reduction in mortality, but it's not the amount of sleep that you get that is the most important. And I'll explain this in this video as well. And make sure you stick to the end to hear my bonus tip, because although this is super powerful for improving your sleep, it's certainly not for the faint hearted. Let's begin. Hello and welcome back to the channel. For those of you that haven't met me, my name is Stephen. Thank you so much for joining. I'm very excited for this one because I think it's such an important topic. But before I go into it, I think it's really important that I mention that sleep is so multifaceted. There are so many things that can affect our sleep, either for the good or for the bad. And therefore, improving your sleep is certainly not limited to just the things that I'm going to go through. But these things are the things that I found to be some of the most important and the most impactful things that you can do right now for your sleep. And improving your sleep, I generally found came to two general factors. We, what we want to do is to set and encourage our circadian rhythm, otherwise known as our biological clock. This is basically a 24 hour rhythm within our bodies that allows our bodies to optimize our function for specific times of the day. It's what allows us to feel awake and not tired in the morning, to give us energy in the morning and for the rest of the day. But it's also the thing that's going to make us feel tired in the evening and allow us to actually sleep and then stay asleep during the night. There are many things therefore that will help to set this circadian rhythm to make sure that it's in sync but it's when it comes out of sync is when we start to get some issues it's when we start to feel more tired in the morning and struggle to sleep at night so particularly the first few things i'm going to go through here are some of the most impactful things that you can do to help really set this circadian rhythm to give you the best chance of having energy in the day and actually sleeping at night. The other thing that we want to do in the morning is increase a hormone called cortisol. You probably heard of this hormone, often it's associated with bad things because it's a hormone that is gonna increase our stress. And although often in people this can be elevated, the time of the day you want it to be at its highest is actually in the morning. So actually in the morning when cortisol rises, this is a good thing because this is what's gonna help you to feel more energy and more awake first thing in the morning. So going into the first thing, this is one of the most impactful things that you can do to help really set this rhythm, this 24 hour cycle. And this is to have rhythms in your bedtime and in your wake time. So going to bed at the same time every day and more importantly, is getting up at the same time every day, setting an alarm clock every single day. And I would argue that you ideally want to do this whether you're working or whether you're not working. Because one of the difficulties is if you're going through the weekend where you're waking up super late, but then in the week you're having to get up really early, then your body is going to have to constantly adjust from one time to the other. So the closer these two times can be, and ideally if they are the same, the easier it is for your body to know when you're normally going to wake up. And that helps the body better prepare you for the day and therefore you're more likely to feel more energy in the morning but also it's going to help you to feel tired in the evening if you're constantly going to bed and getting up at different times your body's going to be a little bit confused as to when you're going to have to feel tired ready to go to bed at night and particularly if you're the kind of person that can't sleep until midnight or one or two in the morning most likely is because you're getting up super late in the morning so the best thing to do is to slowly reduce your wake time in the morning and that will allow you to feel tired earlier on in the evening and eventually you'll be able to set yourself to a good wake up time and a sleep time and therefore set your routine one interesting harvard study compared one group of students 
that focus on getting a certain amount, a good amount of sleep every night. And then compared it with the other group that didn't really worry about the duration, but more worried about the consistency of their bedtime and their wait time. And they looked to see what result this gave and the outcome that they looked at was their exam results. And interestingly, the group that focused on the consistency, so even though they weren't getting as much sleep as the other group, but they were going to bed and waking up at the same time, they found that that group actually performed better on their exam than the group that didn't get a consistent bedtime and awake time but got more sleep. So it actually suggests that the consistency is perhaps more important than the amount of sleep that you're getting. And this is where the reduction in mortality in regards to sleep comes in, in regards to what I was talking about earlier. So as I've mentioned, it's not the amount of sleep that's important because in this study, what they found was that there was a 20 to 48% reduction in mortality in those that had a consistent bedtime and wake up time, they had a consistent sleep schedule compared to those that focus on duration. So the consistency is what's really important and it's gonna help set your circadian rhythm. Now the next thing that's gonna also be really important for telling your body that it's the morning time and therefore setting that circadian rhythm is getting natural light first thing in the morning. It's getting a lot of light into your eyes because you have certain neurons that will fire to certain areas of your brain. The names of them aren't gonna be that important, but they basically will start to increase cortisol and basically just tell your brain that it is morning and your brain needs some kind of signal to know and confirm that it is morning. So one of the best things that you can do particularly in the first 30 to 60 minutes, is get some sunlight. Interestingly, Huberman, Andrew Huberman, who has some fantastic resources on YouTube on how you can improve your sleep, talks about getting sunlight first thing in the day as almost one of the most important. He, says, he seems to really talk about this one very strongly. And here's what he has to say about sunlight. But you do want cortisol to reach its peak early in the day, right about the time you wake up. One way that you can ensure that that cortisol peak occurs early in the day, right about the time that you wake up, is to view bright light, ideally from sunlight, within the first 30 to 60 minutes after waking. Now, if you live in the UK, like me, and in the winter, I'm often getting up about at least an hour and a half before the sun comes up, then it can be really difficult to get your natural sunlight in the first 30 to 60 minutes. So what you can do, and this is what Huberman talks about, is you can use a strong light, ideally a white light, like the one that I'm using to film this video. And it's important that it's a strong light and it's a white light because some of the lights that you're going to have around your house, particularly the warmer ones, they don't tend to be really strong enough to be able to stimulate the area of your brain to get this benefit. Your phone is also unfortunately not strong enough. So you can use these ring lights, or I'm using a, a soft box here, and you can whack it up on full that can have the same effect. Well, probably not the same effect because the sun is going to be always pretty much a stronger a light source. The best thing to do is always to go out if there is sun, but if there isn't sun, just turn as many lights as you can on in your house and you can even get a white light, a strong white light to simulate this, particularly if you're struggling with sleep. You actually may find that this helps. Number three is again to help your body set that 24 hour cycle. It's almost to resync yourself every single day to make sure that your clock is not slightly moving one way or the other, which then can affect your sleep. And that is to have regular meal times in the day. This is gonna provide another input into your body as well as the light and as well as getting that regular sleep time and the wake up time. Now number four, is to exercise. Now the best time in the day to exercise for your sleep is really gonna be first thing. And that's because exercise is gonna be the thing that's gonna help increase your body temperature. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this is quite important for helping you to wake up. It's what happens naturally. And if you can encourage this, this can help you feel more awake and have more energy. And so therefore exercising first thing in the day is gonna to help to do that relatively quickly. Exercise has many benefits, as I'm sure you're aware of, for many different aspects of health. And so it's generally going to be a good thing anyway. Ideally, you want to exercise at some point in the day, but ideally not just before bed, because 
before bed, you actually want your body temperature to start to cool. You don't want to be really hot. And the other thing that what, what happens with exercise is you're going to increase your cortisol levels, which again, you want in the morning, but not in the evening. Now, number five is going to be more about not disrupting the sleep quality, so the process of sleep, rather than your biological clock now. And that is not to eat before bed. I would suggest that you have your last meal at least three to four hours before bed, and that you don't have anything afterwards, even a snack, even a nut, anything like that. You can have a drink that doesn't contain sugar, but not to have anything before bed. And that is because eating before bed within three hours has been shown to disrupt the quality of your sleep. And that's primarily going to be because all the blood is going to be in your stomach as opposed to in the areas of your body that it needs to be for you to be able to sleep properly. It's also interestingly been associated with weight gain. They've shown that those that eat just before bed tend to gain more weight than those that don't do that. So if you are overweight and trying to lose weight, you're not only going to improve your sleep, but it's also going to help you to lose weight. And number six is can avoid any stimulants before bed, primarily caffeine in the form of coffee. So caffeine generally, but coffee is obviously the most important. Now caffeine tends to have a half-life of anywhere between six and eight hours. So therefore I would suggest that you have your last coffee at least eight hours before you go to bed. I would suggest to be safe, to only have coffee in the morning and midday onwards that you have decaffeinated. Interestingly, different people actually metabolize caffeine at different rates and six to eight hours is average. However, some people have been shown to be able to metabolize it as quick as two hours, which may explain why some people can have coffee before bed and actually sleep. However, I don't think I've found or heard of any studies that have showed that you can have caffeine or in the form of coffee or whatever the form is just before bed and it not affect your quality of sleep even if you are able to get to sleep fine and you feel fine the next day. The primary mechanism why caffeine is going to affect your ability to get to sleep is because it interferes with a chemical called adenosine which is something that should naturally build up across the day and before you get to bed it should be very high which then helps you feel tired and actually fall asleep. Caffeine is basically going to reduce the amount of adenosine you're going to have at the end of the day which makes you feel less tired which is why coffee can give you energy but obviously not that great if it's just before bed. Number seven is to avoid another type of stimulant and that is alcohol. Alcohol typically will help you actually get to sleep in a lot of cases. It doesn't tend to have too much of an issue with do you get into sleep but it almost always affects your quality of sleep which again is going to be just or even more important so try not to have alcohol just before bed particularly if you're suffering with your sleep and lastly number eight is going to be a really important one we mentioned at the beginning that you want to get natural light at the beginning of the day because it helps to make you feel stimulated so therefore you don't want to get that at the end of the day and generally that's quite easy because you don't generally have sun at the end of the day, so naturally this is going to happen. However, what we do have are these artificial lights. And annoyingly, your phone, although it doesn't really give you enough light in the morning to give you that benefit of waking you up, it unfortunately does give you the negative effects of stimulating you in the evening and therefore making it harder for you to go to sleep because it's going to trick your body to think that it's the beginning of the day. So it's just an input that's gonna be a little bit confusing to your body, that's gonna confuse when you should be going to sleep. So ideally you want to avoid screens, ideally, and I would suggest not having bright lights like this one that I'm filming with towards the end of the day and to have warmer lights. Now, as I mentioned, there is one bonus tip that although is really powerful, it's certainly not for the faint hearted. And as I mentioned at the beginning, what we wanna do in the morning is increase our body temperature. Another way of increasing your body temperature is cold exposure. Now you might be thinking, what the heck, surely cold exposure is gonna lower my body temperature, but your body actually has a thermostat. When it senses cold, it's gonna fire all cylinders to heat you up. So cold exposure, provided it's not too long, so Huberman actually suggests about one to three minutes, actually is gonna increase your body temperature. And therefore it's actually a very good thing to do first thing in the morning because it helps to increase that, that temperature but also helps to increase your cortisol. So first thing in the morning, if you want a powerful way of helping you feel awake and with a lot of energy, 
then an ice bath is going to do that. And if you want to find out more about the instant benefits, as well as some long-term benefits of taking an ice bath during cold exposure, if you need a little bit more of a push to do it, then I have done a video that will pop up in just a sec, just about here, that you can check out, I highly recommend. But just before that pops up, don't forget that if you head into the description of this video, you can get 10% of Fevo Barefoot shoes that I personally wear every single day, 10% of Athenase, a superfood specifically formulated for men, and 15% of Fussy, which is a natural deodorant that doesn't have any of the harmful chemicals that traditional deodorants contain. I'll see you either on that video there or on my next one. Thanks for watching.